Hitomi Mokuzuki is a lifestyle YouTuber who's gained popularity for her vegan meal inspo, travel vlogs, wellness routines, clothing hauls, short films, poetry, and real talks about sexuality, spirituality, and mental health. But like most influencers in the wellness space, Hitomi has recently jumped on the gut health bandwagon, frequently sharing the diet tips that she's used to allegedly cleanse and reset her gut. Buckle up, fellow nutrition nerds. We have a lot to unpack. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at Hitomi Mokuzuki's cleansing diet to reset her gut. And of course, you can pause the screen or look at my description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning because we will be discussing pretty restrictive diets here. So feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. All right, lovelies, let's get into it. This isn't the kind of cleanse where I restrict my food, I'm trying to lose weight, I only drink liquids, and then I have a complete uh, spiral at the end of it and just eat tons of the food that I wasn't supposed to be eating. There are a few contradictions here. I mean, I am relieved that the intention of the cleanse is not weight loss because it would probably be the worst way to try to lose weight. I mean, any weight lost in a few days after consuming juice or eliminating whatever foods would be immediately regained once off the cleanse. But friends, let's be honest with ourselves. A cleanse is a diet with a more elite sexy name. And diets by definition require restriction of some sort. There is no scenario where a healthy body with functioning organs would need any kind of reset or detox. Like your body just does this every single day constantly when you pee, poo, sweat, and breathe. And any cleanse specifically for gut health makes zero sense in my books. Like gut health is a long game. Like the microbiome can change within just a few days depending on diet and environmental factors. So any potential benefits will be immediately erased if you just go back to business as usual after the alleged cleanse. So yeah, that's a pass for me. So one is a yeast cleanse and the other is a parasite cleanse. And I just wanna put good things into my gut. So this yeast cleanse is a simple protocol using this Renew Life Candy Smart um, cleansing program. I'm sure there are other yeast cleanses that you can do, but it's just a pill and uh, tincture every single day. Okay, so this cleanse in particular is allegedly for helping to treat candida, which is a yeast-like fungus that can cause thrush. Honestly, candida has become grossly overdiagnosed in the wellness community. Like most people who insist they have candida overgrowth do not meet the diagnostic criteria at all. Anyway, I brought this particular product to my functional RD and IBS practice groups, and we all agreed that there is no evidence for a product like this, and it can actually potentially be dangerous. There's a long list of powerful antimicrobials here, like berberine, garlic, neem, oregano, etc. And when taken together, a product like this could easily wipe out all of your good gut bacteria. Not worth the gamble, in my opinion. So if you suspect that you you might have candida overgrowth, please speak to your healthcare provider because a basic antifungal medication can be extremely effective and relief is typically quite quick. My kind of guidelines for doing this cleanse is not having any processed foods and especially processed sugars. So going sugar-free is a common approach to eliminating candida because it's believed that the sugar kind of feeds the yeast. And the idea is that removing sugar from the diet will starve the yeast and therefore effectively kill it off. However, most of our evidence on this theory is based on research in a test tube environment, not actual humans. And the research that we do have mostly has found that limiting processed sugar had very little, if any, 
influence on candida colonization. What we do know is that probiotics may be more effective at warding off candida by helping to populate the gut with healthy bacteria. And as we also know, not all probiotics are created equal. So the best probiotic strains for candida seem to be Lactobacillus paracasei, Acidophilus, Rhamnosus, and Ruteri. So as always, I do prefer to focus on what we can add to the diet to support a healthy gut rather than always thinking about what we need to cut out. A healthy gut needs diversity. Plate this all together with some quinoa, the mushrooms, and the veggie burgers, and then a huge dollop of sauerkraut, which is my favorite. Okay, I break down the evidence on lion's mane mushrooms in my TikTok superfoods video right here. But in short, we do have some early evidence showing that it may help to protect against Alzheimer's disease, relieve symptoms of anxiety and depression, and may even help to boost cognitive of function. However, most of the research to date has been done on rats, so we really do need more evidence on humans to understand how this is going to apply to us. But when it comes to gut health specifically, there is some research suggesting that lion's mane may stimulate intestinal immune activity. But again, this research has been done on animals, so we don't really have a clear understanding of its benefits for human gut health. All that said, a gut healthy diet is a diet rich in pre and probiotics, and this definitely hits all the marks. We have tons of fiber, AKA prebiotics from the quinoa and kale, plus some natural probiotics from the fermented sauerkraut, which also boasts a variety of supportive digestive enzymes. And I also really love that we've got healthy fats from the tahini dressing and protein from the quinoa and veggie burger. So all around, this looks like a delicious hunger crush and pretty happy gut meal. But I added spinach on top and made it more so into a scramble. I added some sprouted hummus and some sauerkraut with it as well as some hot sauce and it is so good. I love this stuff. Vegan culinary creativity just never ceases to amaze me because I would have never thought to integrate soaked mung beans into a breakfast scramble. So yeah, your girl is intrigued. But it definitely does make sense for the gut since soaking sprouted beans helps to reduce their anti-nutrient content, making them easier to digest and making their nutrients more bioavailable. As for the meal itself, we're getting protein from the mung bean and nooch mixture, fiber from the veggies, plus some fat in the hummus. This meal is also loaded with key vegan nutrients like vitamin B12 from the nutritional yeast and iron and calcium from the mung beans and spinach. And because we've paired the non-heme iron with vitamin C from the peppers, we're going to dramatically amplify that iron's bioavailability. Love it. I am really craving sugar right now. It's like my daydream. I've been saving recipes on Instagram and Pinterest of different vegan cookies and brownies and treats and I'm really feeling some withdrawals. I am also not demonizing any of my cravings or every time I go to the grocery store, I let myself know it's okay if you do eat that vegan gluten-free cupcake sitting by the register. Like everything is available to you, but is it gonna make your body feel good? I am choosing out of love not to rather than restriction or or punishing myself. I am confused. What? How in the same monologue did we establish that everything is available to you, it's okay to eat the vegan gluten-free cupcake, but then also I'm craving sugar to the point of distraction in my day, but I won't eat it because it's not an option for me. Like you can have it, but no, you can't have it. Listen, I get the diet culture or it's sexier cousin wellness culture is sneaky as and I'm not surprised that after telling herself that she can't have sugar on this cleanse, that she obsessively wanted it even more, even though in the past she never felt attached to sugar. This is what diet restrictions make us do. They make us want these foods even more and cause these deep desires because we are in scarcity mentality. But when we let go of the bogus cleanses or diet rules, over time, we often can find that our interest or desire in like less nutritious foods may start to dissipate. We can make choices out of love rather than out of restriction because the option is there. It isn't breaking the cleanse rule. Even if she physically feels great on this cleanse, mentally, she's using up a lot of emotional energy daydreaming about vegan cupcakes that she can't have. 
So while I can appreciate Hitomi's desire to nourish herself with nutrient-rich foods, we need to find a balance where both physical and emotional nourishment have a seat at the table. Nutrition should never be 100% black and white. Use whatever you have on hand. And I also cooked some rice, which is so yummy with tomato paste and half an onion chopped into there while boiling. But I just made simple kind rice and this is what it looks like coming together. Beans, rice, corn, peppers, can't really go wrong. I got the mushrooms on there and then I added even more rice because I was hungry and I made this fresh guac with red onion, tomato, and all the guac things and then put a huge dollop of sauerkraut right in the middle. This looks insanely delicious and another excellent example of a balanced vegan recipe that checks off all the boxes. So we're getting protein and fiber from the black beans, more fiber from the veggies and corn, and healthy fats from the guac. I also noticed that we've had sauerkraut in basically every meal here and if that feels good to her, amazing. But it's worth noting that sauerkraut is a high FODMAP food. So if you're prone to bloating and gas, go slow and gauge how small or moderate portions make you feel. Uh, this one day, my friend who works at a donut shop gave me free donuts and I did not eat them. They are vegan and I gave them away and I'm really proud of my willpower there. There was a donut eating contest. These donuts came back to haunt me and I had one. I was like, you know what? This is a lifestyle change and having a vegan donut is okay every now and then. I just, I just needed to do it and it was delicious and I didn't feel horrible after like in my body, I didn't have a sugar crash, but that was my one slip up. Yes. Having a donut is very much okay. I fully understand that for some folks with complicated histories with food or specific medical conditions, abstinence or restriction seems like the only way to manage sugar consumption. And it may be, you know, everyone's journey is going to be unique. But one of the biggest predictors of a binge is restriction. So in my experience, the most successful way to manage sugar cravings is to have some sugar speckled regularly and consistently throughout your diet. Letting desire mount by eating around the craving on what I call the satisfaction hunt generally results in you over consuming a bunch of unsatisfying foods until you finally say F it and eat all the donuts in sight. I say it's better to just acknowledge you're craving a donut. Ask yourself honestly, like is an apple gonna cut it as a replacement? And if not, eat the damn donut judgment free. A donut will not make or break your health and wellness goals. It doesn't make you good. It doesn't make you bad. A donut is just a donut. And when we finally take it off its pedestal, we can neutralize the power that that donut has over us. And I get the impression that Hitomi is trying to edge herself into this neutral place by saying all foods are welcome and insisting that it's not about restriction or demonizing foods. But if that truly were the case, Hitomi would have just been able to enjoy that donut like it was no biggie and then carry on with the rest of her day. But instead, she shared her internal battle using pretty demonizing language by calling the experience a slip up, saying that the donuts were haunting her and that she had to exercise willpower not to eat them the first time. That is not giving yourself unconditional permission to eat out of self-love. And I get that Hitomi's approach is to eat foods that make her feel good. And perhaps donuts don't make her feel physically great, which is why she tries to avoid them. And that is totally valid and fair. But I also think that developing a healthy relationship with food is also about collecting data on how foods make you feel. And the fact that she said that this donut was delicious and didn't make her feel horrible in her body, I mean, I think that tells us that a donut can and absolutely should be enjoyed 
without the side of fear or impending guilt. The meal that I made regularly is this kitchery and I also love air frying tofu. That was really a good addition. I had some kimchi radishes and I just like to squeeze lime on top of my little lentils and some wilted cilantro. This is so good. This is another delicious vegan meal in the book. So we're getting protein and fiber from the lentils and more protein and calcium from the tofu. And the vitamin C from the lime will also help to boost iron absorption as well. It's balanced, vegan friendly, and with that little extra dose of fermented kimchi, it's a gut friendly choice as well. And my partner was also doing this cleanse, so he made these yummy juices. One is a freshly squeezed noni juice, the other is coconut water and a lot of ginger. And the last one was just a pineapple juice. So normally I'm pretty weary when it comes to drinking juices in the name of gut health, since most juices contain high amounts of FODMAPs, which can potentially make digestive symptoms worse. But I will say that this particular combination may actually have some scientific merit. So pineapples naturally contain the digestive enzyme bromelain, which supports digestion by helping to break down protein into amino acids. Likewise, ginger contains the digestive enzyme zingabane, which likewise helps to break down protein. We also know that ginger has prokinetic properties, which helps to move things along by stimulating stomach emptying and gut motility. And then there's coconut water, which is rich in electrolytes, making it a great option for folks who experience loose bowels. Ultimately though guys, any and all hydration is essential for a healthy active gut. So if you like the flavor of these juices, amazing, go for it. If not, water is just fine. So I'm probably just going to do one orange because I am trying to lower the sugar, even natural sugar. I've been trying to have one serving a day. I went raw vegan for a certain period of my life and having that much sugar, even just more than like two servings of fruit a day, really threw off my gut. It was awful. I was bloated for months after. So digestive symptoms are quite common among folks who are transitioning to a more plant-based diet. And there are two primary reasons for this, or I guess like three, if we're talking like a raw vegan diet, as is the case here. Number one, a huge leap in fiber consumption. So if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber, then your body is going to have a pretty tough time breaking down that fiber from a higher quantity of plant-based foods, which can lead to uncomfortable digestive symptoms like gas and bloating. This is why we really recommend a gradual increase in fiber intake while also making sure to get enough water in to move things along. Number two, FODMAPs. So in short, FODMAPs are fermentable sugars contained in a lot of fruits and vegetables that can be difficult for some folks to digest. And because vegan diets are naturally higher in FODMAP containing fruits and veg, some folks may experience digestive symptoms as a result. And three, specific to a raw vegan diet, is the raw part. Cooking softens some of those tough fibers, making them easier to digest. So raw foods will always be a lot more work for your gut to break down. Thorough chewing is really, really important here as is eating slowly and intentionally. But basically this triple threat can be a major assault on the bowels, which is one of many reasons why I don't recommend a fully raw diet. All that said, I don't think that it's fair to paint all fruits with the same bloat promoting brush. Oranges, for example, are low FODMAP and not particularly high in fiber either. So having more than one orange a day probably not gonna be a big deal. It has been about one month without processed sugar. I've been filming this video for a while, but I have to say I don't have any intense cravings. So this kind of checks out as we know that on average, our taste bud turnover rate is around eight to 12 days. And this explains why some sugary foods that perhaps you used to eat regularly may taste a lot sweeter after not having them for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. And the same can be said for other basic tastes like salty, bitter, sour, and umami. But again, 
I want to point out that these are physical changes, not emotional changes. And while sweet foods may physically taste different to Hitomi, and perhaps she doesn't need as much of them to feel satisfied, that emotional desire may still be there and still deserves to be honored without judgment. All that said, despite the questionable and potentially dangerous cleansing supplements, Hitomi's approach to supporting her gut health is actually quite sound. She prioritizes gut-friendly foods that contain natural probiotics and prebiotic fibers. Her meals are balanced, nutrient-rich, and varied, which not only helps to support a diverse microbiome, but also lowers the risk of common nutrient deficiencies, which we can potentially run into on a vegan diet. On paper, it all checks out. Nice job, team. But this is just a reminder that emotional satisfaction is just as important as physical satisfaction when it comes to long-term diet adherence. And that's the other important point here. Like, is there really much point in doing a cleanse for four weeks for your gut? Probably not. And it could potentially cause more problems down the road if it leads to rebound eating after said cleanse. So cheers to sporadic donut dates, colorful veg, and organs that detox our bodies all on their own. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.